Hey guys, I am so excited to be getting on a flight to New York City, the United States of America. There's only a few small issues. I have literally just come back from Syria, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. And I'm just about to get on a flight to the United States of America with visas and stamps from all these countries in my passport. But let's back up a little bit. I'm Ava Zubek and I am a travel vlogger. I mostly travel to places that most other tourists don't. So recently I've been filming in Yemen, Syria, Iran, Iraq, and Pakistan. Now, the most common reaction I get when I tell people about these places is, isn't it dangerous? I don't really look at it that way. For me, these places are filled with natural beauty. They are the cradles of our civilization. Unfortunately, all of these countries have found themselves in the crossfire of Western interests and they are still suffering the consequences. Here is where the drama begins. I've been invited to the United States to attend a really important, really cool event and I really wanted to go. One thing that you should know is that the United States is not exactly best friends with any of these countries. Here's the thing. If you have stamps from any of these countries in your passport, suddenly your entry into the United States becomes a little bit more difficult because suddenly you are seen as a potential threat to the security, national security of the United States of America. That's how it is. Most of my friends who have stamps from any of those countries and who have subsequently tried to enter the United States have been questioned, interrogated, detained, and in some instances even denied entry into the United States. When I came back home to the US a few months ago, uh, the immigration officer stopped me because he saw my Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iraq visas, and he took me in the back room and questioned me for about 30 minutes. I'm um, Canadian, male, had Turkish, Lebanese, Egyptian stamps in my passport, was waiting for 30 minutes and then was questioned for another 20 to 30 minutes in a small room. And I'm not even talking about the Syrian or the Iranian stamps, I'm talking about Egyptian or Lebanese stamps, which I also have a bunch of in my passport. I finally landed at JFK and as I walked towards immigration, I was really half expecting to be sent back, but at least definitely interrogated and questioned. That was for sure. So I went up to the gates at immigration, the little machines that they have, I put in my passport with the visa and the machine rejected it twice, but that turned out to just be a machine error. So when I put it in the last time it accepted me and then I went through to the immigration officer and she was looking at the stamps and she kind of looked at me. You know what happened? This is what happened. I cannot believe it. I was asked zero questions zero questions about any of those places. The only question that she asked me was the standard run of the mill, what is the purpose of your visit to the United States? That's it. No other questions. Like, I mean, dude, I'm wearing the Syrian kefir. I have stamps from Yemen and Syria and my passport and you saw them and you looked at them and you don't ask me any questions. None at all. This is what it boils down to. Yes, there may be a tiny bit of luck involved in having a slightly more aware, open-minded immigration officer, but at the end of the day, the real truth is that I had no issues entering the US because I am a white woman with a very good excuse, being a travel vlogger. This story would have ended very differently if I had a slightly different sounding, more foreign sounding name, if the color of my skin were different, or if I were a guy. People of color are not treated in the same way at European or American border crossings as white people. Racial profiling is really a thing, just as is racial privilege. I found it shocking to see just how explicitly the system worked in my favor just because I look like this. The thing is, I don't really have a complete, all-encompassing solution to this problem. But I think where it starts is for us to acknowledge that the problem exists, that it's really an issue. And I think if there are any white people watching this video, please realize that we are given so much privilege at all Western international border crossings. Next step, I don't know, perhaps recognize our own unconscious underlying biases and try and consciously fight them, question them, negate them, erase them. 
I was expecting a very difficult border crossing. It turned out to be extremely easy, but it did make me think differently about this entire business of international borders and, and, and how we cross them and who gets to cross them easily and, and who doesn't. That was a very eye-opening realization for me and I know I'll never look at border crossings in the same way again. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.